Well, you folks have spoken, especially on Twitter, in regards to who you think the Warriors should trade for. And today, Kyle and Mills and I are going to address all your trade proposals. Plus, maybe have a few of our own. It's Trade Proposal Day here at Locked On Warriors. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Part Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. And when you enter the promo code locked on NBA, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. I got mine. <laughs> freaking love it kylan did you get your bird dogs order no i didn't get my bird dogs order what the heck well they, they sent an email to all of us you did you not fill in the the thing like all the hosts had a chance to get free bird dogs clothes so when we talk about the ad read we can actually attest to it um get on that i think there's still time get okay your free bird dogs. well yeah i got mine and i'm stoked i got a pair of sh- a couple pairs of shorts the whole premise of bird dogs real quick before you talk warriors and give some love to one of our sponsors is it's like really comfortable clothing that you can use both to work out and to go to your business meeting. Like it's, it's multi-purpose diverse yet comfortable and stylish clothes. That's their whole angle. So uh, go check out bird dogs. You go check out Kylan Mills on social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok at Kylan Mills. You can follow me Cyrus Austin's on Twitter at dog surf road show. Kylan, we, we, uh, we talked a little bit yesterday about, uh, the Warriors options this offseason. We were just having a discussion before we hit the record button today in terms of what they can do next year. What they did last year didn't work, whether that was on the front office in terms of investing too soon uh, into the youth movement, whether that was on Kerr not playing the, the young players and going his own direction, whatever the reason was, wh- whatever finger, wherever you want to point your finger to for the blame, it's over. It's in the past. Now let's focus on the present and the future. And bottom line is they can't do what they what they did last year. They're going to have to actually invest in researching some good, solid veterans out there to sign. And they're also going to have to make a trade. Uh, do you agree with that? What are your thoughts on what the Warriors have to do this offseason before we jump into all the proposals? Yeah, I firmly believe the Warriors need to make a trade for a win now piece. The two timeline deal they had going last season to the degree they had it going just did not work. Flat out did not work. You don't see it throughout the history of the NBA where teams are winning championships and continuing a dynasty while developing so many young players at once. You look at the roster construction last season. You had James Wiseman. You had Ryan Rollins, Patrick Baldwin Jr., Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, and then you throw Jordan Poole into that mix of players who are, you know, in their teen years through 23 years old. And that is a huge, huge group of players that have to be developed and that aren't quite ready and that are, in some cases, projects that really, really need to refine their skill sets. That is so difficult to do when you're looking at six different players who need to really be developed in addition to the team winning right now. So this is an area where I think the Warriors need to recognize, hey, it didn't quite work. Now, how do we retool? Yes, we can still develop a couple players, but can we improve this roster with some significant pieces who are going to help this group win now? I was hoping before the trade deadline, the Warriors were going to make a trade. I know we talked about it, Cyrus. I think they could have. I think they should have. You know, it's all easier said than done and, and, you know, revisionist history and all that. But this is an area where I hope this offseason the Warriors realize they have to address this. They need to bring in a win now piece. I do not want to see this team waste another season of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. And that's the bottom line. Steph Curry was not the reason why the Warriors lost this playoff round and why the Warriors struggled throughout the season. He wasn't. It's some of the pieces around him that need to be improved. And to me, it has to be done via trade. I want to give credit to Bob Myers. He has been very um, successful. And especially when you look at the championship roster from the 2022 championship team in finding players on vet minimums that he's been able to add. Uh, But I still just don't think that's going to be enough. I don't mind them looking for some free agents, but I still think that a trade needs to be made in order to significantly upgrade 
upgrade this roster to the level it needs to be upgraded to possibly contend or win a championship. That's you know my absolutely- thought on it. So I don't know. Well, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I, I know I'm, I'm totally with you. Um, the, the complacency at, at the trade deadline was colossally disappointing. I thought they really let Steph down in doing so. Yeah. Um, and, and then I didn't see the aggressiveness this last off season that we saw two off seasons ago, like two off seasons, two off seasons ago, they found a diamond in the rough in Otto Porter Jr., a player who had been relatively out of the league uh, because of various injuries, especially to his foot. Um, one time was a phenomenal player. The Warriors took a gamble. It paid off. He was a phenomenal player that one season for the Warriors. Nemanja Bielica, another player they took a, a gamble on. Veteran minimum. Totally paid off. Uh, two years ago, if my memory serves correct, I don't think they even used uh, the mid-level exception, uh, which was incredible. But again, they, they they had a combination of really good free agent pickups, and then they had solid veterans and some young players on their bench. Juan Toscano Anderson, Damian Lee. Those are the two players that I still haven't gotten an, an answer on in terms of why the team didn't bring them back. I never understood that. I feel like they would have been a huge help, certainly a, a bigger help than Lamb and Jerome. I did not understand that decision-making process at all. But here we are. Uh, before we before we started recording as well, um, uh, you, Kylan, you, you weren't part of the shows following Game 6 and then a couple days last this week earlier. Um, and we, so we haven't really touched together on Dante DiVincenzo. Um, I said my goodbye to him. I said out of a dedici, which I hope means goodbye in Italian. He was a phenomenal one-year player, but I don't think there's a chance in hell he's coming back. Uh, the Warriors are limited in the sense that they no longer can use a mid-level exception because of the tax apron they're in right now um, under the new CBA, which totally screws the Warriors over. So they don't have a mid-level anymore. And that was the only way they could have offered DiVincenzo more than yeah. what his player option would have been this coming season. So the only option they have, and DiVincenzo is certainly going to opt out. He's not going to uh, exercise that second year player option because he could probably make three to four times what he made this year with the Warriors. Um, and all the Warriors can do is offer him the same amount, plus I think like 10%, like a slight bump. So I think it's goodbye. Would you agree with that? And, and, and any final words for DiVincenzo? Or do you think there's still hope he stays? I don't know your thoughts. I think Dante DiVincenzo is gone. You could see the writing on the wall because of the position the Warriors are in. Their hands are tied, given, you mentioned it, Cyrus, the new CBA, the luxury taxes have just absolutely been piling up for the Golden State Warriors since last season. And that's why you see the turnover with some of these guys that they bring in on, on shorter deals, on vet minimums, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone wanted Gary Payton the second. Everyone wanted Otto Porter Jr. to stay last year, even in Nemanja Bielitsa, who ended up going back to Europe. And, you know, he's closer to family now, which is good for him. But some of these players that, you know, were key pieces, it's so difficult for the Warriors to keep these guys around. And I know fans always, you'd like to think, hey, maybe they'll take a pay cut. Maybe they'll stick around to be a part of something special to be a part of the Warriors to win a championship but I mean when you're talking about three times the salary you could be offered somewhere else like at the end of the day the NBA is a business and it's fantastic the Warriors do such a good job of identifying these guys and they bring them in and there is you know something to be said for the Warriors selling players on the culture on the opportunity to win a championship but at the end of the day money talks and the Warriors hands are tied when it comes to keeping a player like Dante DiVincenzo so I don't think that there's any chance that he stays personally. Um, I know he said actually though, in his postseason, you know, press conference, he goes, yeah, you know, I'd love to stay if I could. And, you know, I think that's a general feeling from all the players who spent, like I said, when you look back at last season, you know, the OPJs and Gary Payton, who ended up coming back, um, Nemanja Bielitsa, Damian Lee, all the, a lot of the guys who moved on, you know, they all kind of had the same sentiments. We'd love to stay if we could. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about such a massive, massive, massive difference in, in the salary they'd be offered elsewhere, it, you know, it's going to be hard to to get anyone to stay. So I think Dante DiVincenzo has gone and that does need uh, leave another need in the roster. And that's why the reason we were talking about it before we copped on this episode and just talking about what the Warriors need most in a trade, what voids are going to have to fill this offseason. I know that's a little bit more for another episode in terms of kind of what movement there is going to be in the Warriors and, and possible free agency and free agent pickups. But that is something to keep in mind that I don't expect Dante DiVincenzo to be here. And if you're talking about also trading Jordan Poole, um, those are two ball handlers in the second unit who could potentially not be with the Warriors next season. Or at least, like I said, as, as we're talking about Jordan Poole really being the odd man out and, and the possible moving piece in a trade scenario. 
Yeah, and 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 that's the bottom line. Is it's is Jordan Poole is the odd man out. The Warriors are not going to make a significant upgrade to this roster if they don't make trades. They only have two options: trades and veteran minimum deals for free agents. That's it. That's all they have. And so the bottom line is if they run it back to the same team, you're probably going to get the same result, maybe even a little worse. Uh, the veteran core is not getting any younger. Um, I, I, you know, unless Jordan Poole drastically turns his his season and career around and, uh, you know, suddenly becomes a very efficient player, you know, what you saw is what you're probably going to get. Maybe he needs, you know, a, a fresh, clean slate, a, a new atmosphere to, to play in. But Regardless, that's why we're where Jordan Poole is the focus of a lot of these trade discussions because he's making a ton of money. So you can at least get a player back who makes a ton of money. Um, that's the limitation with with Kaminga and Moody. I don't want to, either of those players to be traded, honestly. I think they do have a, a role on the team next year. Um, but look, if, if if they're not part of the plan in terms of getting real minutes next year, you probably need to trade them too. It's, it's worthless to have them sit on the bench. And their value diminishes if they just sit on the bench. Right now, Kaminga's value is high. So even though I don't want to see him go, um, if you're not going to play him, which I don't think would be a smart decision, but if you're not going to play him, you might as well get something back for him. So uh, so some of the, so Kaminga might be involved in some of these. But regardless, we solicited trade to, uh, ideas and proposals. And there's some in the chat right now. When we come back, we're going to get into it. We're going to read all the tweets that had trade proposals. We'll let you know if there's issues with them, if there's uh, you know, if it's actually a good idea. Um, so we'll ad adjust that or address that. I'm sorry. And so much more. Uh, first got to give some love to again, a new sponsor and that's bird dogs. Kylan, fill the form out. So the next time. Dude, so I literally, when we were starting the episode, I was so mad as soon as you started talking about it, because I love comfortable clothes that can uh -huh. also like moonlight as work clothes. And I'm trying to find the email from locked on that I missed. Apparently it was from Nick. Yeah, it was from This is awesome. It was from it was our from channel Nick. manager, Nick Angst, okay. who hosts Locked On Mavericks. Uh, he's, our, he's he's one of our bosses, and I think he sent the email. Um, yeah, so I and they and I got mine fast. And the bottom line with Bird Dogs again is it's all about diverse clothes, right? If you want one pair of shorts, like that's what they send me. They send me shorts, and they send me the tumbler, which is awesome if you we want to travel around with a beverage. Um, but the shorts I got, I mean, they're they're the type of clothes that one minute you can be on the golf course, you know, swinging the stick. Then go to a meeting with them, then go to a date that night with them if the weather's warm enough for that. That's what it's all about fit. It's all about comfort and it's all about versatility. You're looking good while you feel good. Uh, so go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. And when you enter the promo code locked on NBA, they're going to throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Again, birddogs.com slash locked on NBA. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Every dayers on Monday, I don't know what we're going to be talking about yet or who's on the show, but... What we can hope for is some good Bob Myers news, and hopefully he stays. Uh, we have no new information regarding that. But regardless, follow the program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. You can follow Kylan Mills on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and more at Kylan Mills. Um, let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. It's going to have uh, the Locked On um, uh, Locked On Dubs Twitter account, and these are literally all of the tweets that came in. We've left this open for a week or so. Here's the first one. I'm just going to go in order from top to bottom. Uh, Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga for the unicorn on the Washington Wizards. Chris Stapps, Porzingis. Uh, Connell Letourneau, our friend, had a similar proposal. Chris Stapps is on an expiring deal, so if the trade doesn't work out, um, you can move on after next year. You can save that money in the process. I would not include Kaminga as well. I think you're giving up too much. I think Jordan Poole... And maybe some sort of uh, a, a minimum contract um, to make the salaries work. Because right now, Chris Stapps makes a little too much. You, you need to throw something else in there to make the salaries work. But um, I don't think it's the worst trade in the world. I'm not a huge fan of it. Oh, why, why is my screen not showing? Hold on. I thought it was shared the whole time. I'm sorry. Um, but what, what are your thoughts, Kylan? Uh, Jordan Poole for Chris Stapps, Porzingis. And you got to throw in a veteran minimum somewhere as well to make the salaries work. Would you be cool with that trade? Do you not like the trade? Your thoughts. 
Uh, so I'm not opposed to this trade. I mean, Chris Stapp's Porzingis fills one of the voids that I think the Warriors need the most. And and outside of, I know we're going to talk about some of the maybe moving pieces that the Warriors may need to fill in terms of like a Dante DiVincenzo. They need a 3 and D player and they need a big. A center specifically would be fantastic. You look back to last season, size was constantly an issue. And I believe going into the last season, the Warriors thought James Wiseman was going to be a you know, a difference maker and someone who could contribute in the postseason as a backup center without him. I do think the size was a problem. Um, mm-hmm. So to me, picking up a center like Porzingis, um, he has good numbers. I, you know, I think he averaged what 20 plus points a game. I don't know exactly where he was. Yeah, at. He averaged 23.2 23. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I would say he averages 20 plus points per game. Um, you know, he brings in the size. I like that he has, you know, some more, more of an offensive skill set. I know we see Draymond sometimes fill in the five for the Warriors due to his defense but I don't mind seeing someone who can attack like that on the Warriors uh on the Warriors roster so I don't hate it um I don't know that it's my favorite of any of the trade proposals I'm kind of on the same page as you Cyrus I know this is someone we're going to talk about as well I don't know that it would happen but I like a DeAndre Ayton possibly we'll get to that in a second yeah big and I know we're going to get to that one in a little bit but I don't hate Porzingis I think Porzingis could fit um and I think that's one of the biggest areas of need for the Warriors is size and specifically someone who can play center. I mean, flat out. Right, right. And and and, and just to add to that, the, the unicorn, uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis, um, he averaged 23.2 points per game this last season, averaged right. 8.4 rebounds. Um, at 7.3, his size obviously plays a factor. He, he averaged one and a half blocks per game. But one of the best parts about him is he spaces the floor. Uh, right. He's a three-point shooter. He he, he shot thirty-eight point five percent from three uh, this past season. Um, so he's not a liability in that regard. I, and again, I wouldn't hate it. I would not hate it. He he gives you immediate size. He's a shot blocking presence, so he gives you defense in that regard. He spaces the floor offensively. Um, if he's if he doesn't get injured, not the worst trade in the world. So that was from Nick Fenske. Thank you very much for that trade proposal. Uh, here's and, and and now here's another player also on the Wizards, um, and that's Kyle Kuzma. Now the Kyle Kuzma deal, he's a free agent. So if the Warriors were to add him, they would have to do so in a sign and trade, uh, which would put the Warriors under a hard cap, and, and that's a really tough position to go in. But at the same time, it, you're, it's not like you, you're adding anyone else to your roster. Um, so if that trade is approved, then I need to double check to see if the Warriors could actually pull that off. But let me ask you this. If it's Jordan Poole for for uh, Kyle Kuzma in a sign and trade, do you do that? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't know that I love the Kuzma trade. Um, what? So what did you say? How viable would that be? I mean, it, it would have to be a sign and trade. Uh, Kuzma tweeted okay. uh, recently. Uh, he 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 retweeted something or quote tweeted, uh, giving an impression that. It was it was involving the Warriors and it was giving the impression, I think, that he wouldn't mind coming to the Warriors. He has world championship experience. He averaged 21.2 points last year, 7.2 rebounds. Um, he's he's an efficient shooter. Uh, you, you know, he sh- he's a 45 percent field goal percentage shooter, shoots 33 percent from three, which is good, not great, but it's passable. Um, he gives you size. He's 6'9", 220. So that's Kyle Kuzma. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's something you would you would like. I wouldn't mind it. I don't. I don't think. I, yeah. In other words, I, I would do it if it's pool for Kuzma. I'd do it. I would not say no to that. Uh, I don't know who I'd prefer between him and Porzingis. Do you have any thoughts on that before we move on? Uh, I think I would take Porzingis over Kuzma. I mean, I think Kuzma could definitely uh, boost the Warriors bench. I think he would help the second unit. Um, I just, I don't know, by the numbers, is he going to be a bigger impact player than a Jordan Poole? I mean, I know Jordan Poole has his faults and and there's reasons why he's the odd man out. I just, I, I personally would rather go for a Porzingis and Kuzma does have size, but I like Porzingis a little bit more. Yeah, remember Kuzma plays yeah. defense. Uh, yeah, he was that's actually, true. And he was an important piece for that 2020 Lakers championship team. Uh, Ray Lang writes that Kuz is not 6'9". I'm just giving you these these measurements from what ESPN is is issuing. They mm-hmm. list him at 6'9", 220. Uh, Bruce Morrow says Kuzma has no basketball IQ. Um, Ray Lang writes, well, uh, for today, I'm just going to go to the tweets because we, we solicited this. And if we can get to the chat ones as well, I will. And some of these might overlap. Uh, another one, and this one I'm not really down for, uh, trading Jordan Poole to the Spurs. 
Uh, this would be for three players. Uh, 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 Collins, uh, I forgot his first name. He played for the Trailblazers previously. He's a big uh, McDermott, Vassal. I say no to Pat that. Collins? It's not, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's up? No, no, no. I was just saying, are you talking about Zach Collins on the Zach Spurs? Collins, thank you. Yes, that's exactly right. what I'm talking about. Um, it's uh, That's a huge no. I, but again, I, I just want to give everyone love who actually took the time to tweet at us. Um, now, another suggestion, Zach Levine of the Chicago Bulls. Uh, and the trade proposal for this is maybe uh, adding Alex Caruso, uh, maybe throwing in other pieces. Um, I don't know if the Chicago Bulls make that trade. I would love them. I, I, you know, I, I love Zach Levine, but I don't know if um, the Bulls would agree to that. They probably want more. I don't know. What do you think about that trade idea? Um, I I love Zach Levine personally, and I wouldn't right. be opposed to bringing him to the Warriors. Like, I love his game. Um, and, you know, you talk about a Jordan Poole leaving. Zach Levine is a shot creator. Um, I personally, big fan. Um, I think it's interesting that this person also threw in a Caruso. We've talked about Caruso. Yeah. And I also love him, especially if Dante DiVincenzo is leaving. Um, that also makes that a little bit more appealing to me because Alex Caruso is such a great perimeter defender and would fill that gap a little bit. Um, right. I don't know that Caruso's, well, I mean, I don't know that he's quite as much of a ball handler as DDV is. Dante DiVincenzo did a good job of running that offense. Cruz was, a, you know, pretty much a defensive specialist and was for the Bulls. Um, but I like him, and I wouldn't mind bringing Caruso here. Um, Lonzo Ball is a huge risk that I wouldn't want to touch um, with a 10-foot ball. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I mean, same. it's just the knee injuries have been constant. You know, he was supposed to come back this season, ended up having to have another surgery that ended his season. And I just personally don't want the Warriors. And I mean, I say that and they've taken some really smart risks like a Dante DiVincenzo. I mean, they brought him in after he'd been dealing with injuries with the Bucks, and it ended up working out in their favor. And same thing with Otto Porter Jr. So kudos to the Warriors training staff for being elite. Um, but I personally just don't know long. I just feel like the Warriors can't afford to pick up a player who's going to end up sitting all season. Like we saw with uh, someone that we all know and love, but Andre Guadala. And that's also a separate topic for a separate day. Yes. I don't know you're if right. you've seen Cyrus that, you know, he said on his point forward podcast, like, don't believe the rumors that you hear pretty much about me retiring. If, and when I decide that I'm going to, I will announce it right here on my podcast. Um, you'll hear it out of my mouth first. And then he made a joke about getting back in the gym. Uh, you know, I don't know how much there is to be said for that. If he's, you know, just trying to let on, cause he wants to make that announcement himself, but uh, the Warriors cannot afford to waste a roster spot in that way either. They cannot waste a roster spot on someone who is going to be hurt or has a high likelihood or is a huge risk. Like, I just don't think you can afford that uh, at this point in the season, or I guess at this inflection point in the Warriors history and the way they're trying to continue the dynasty. I don't know what your thoughts are in terms of specifically players with injuries, but like I said, Lonzo has had so many complications with that knee. Like I am super concerned uh, about throwing him into any discussion, but I would love what? bringing in Zach Levine and crew. So I don't know if the bulls would do it. Well, the Zach Levine, I just I just uh, put it into the trade machine. Zach Levine makes forty million next year. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan Poole makes twenty eight point seven. So you'd ha you'd also have to uh, throw in either Gary Payne the second, mm -hmm. um, Jonathan Kaminga to make the salaries work. It's a lot. I wouldn't mind it, but again, I don't know if the Bulls um, would go for that, and also don't know if that's too much talent to give up uh, in exchange for Zach Levine. And, and so Alex Caruso and any other pieces is just non starter. It just wouldn't work. Um, so moving on, uh, from, so Zach Levine could work. I think, I think Jordan Poole and Kaminga would maybe be giving up too much. Mm -hmm. Um, what I about, I don't know uh, the bulls would do it either. Like, I don't know what's going on over there. Like this wasn't supposed to be rebuilding for them and they ended up not being good this year. Um, and a bunch of people are dropping in the chat. DeMar DeRozan, who I love the mid range King. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know that the bulls are going to be willing to sell all those guys. And then is it worth it? Like you said, is it worth it uh, for Zach Levine? You know, like you mentioned with what they would have to give up. I don't know. Yeah, no, you're absolutely. Um, so, you know, that's a possibility. Uh, also from the same Twitter users, bringing up uh, buddy healed uh, and, and miles Turner. I don't know who TJ is in that. I don't know who the reference is to TJ, but um, look, Miles. I don't, I just look, if you're going to trade Jordan Poole. I feel like you need to get some, something substantial back in return. I mean, he yeah. does still have tremendous potential. Um, he, you know, it, the idea of pool is that he's an important uh, of a component to, to this roster. And so if you're going to trade him, I don't think miles Turner is enough. 
Um, and I don't know if Buddy Heald necessarily is what you need. I'm not really stoked on that one so much. Uh, what about the, the Raptors and Pascal Siakam? A lot of people have brought him up. I would personally love Pascal Siakam. Um, would you make that trade if the Raptors would be interested? Jordan Poole for Pascal Siakam. Your thoughts? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what is the salary comparisons there if you put it into the trade machine in terms of where where those two stack up? You, I think realistically, uh, Pascal Siakam makes thirty-seven point eight million, so you'd have to include. So it would a be second... Pool and Kaminga situation. Do we exactly, think? exactly? Okay. So it would have to be Pool and Kaminga. Could also be Pool and like like uh, uh, Kaminga's not the only other asset you can move. You could also move Jonathan Kaminga. Um, you can move Patrick Baldwin Jr. Although although he wouldn't be enough. Um, Ryan Rollins is another asset you can move, although he wouldn't be enough either. Um, so and, and I'm totally with you by the way about Andre Iguodala. They cannot waste the roster space on him again. Unless, unless he takes the 15th roster spot and then you actually use the 14th on someone a little better than Anthony Lamb. If that's the case and Iguodala stays in that uh, in, in, in that kind of assistant coach role where he's making player dollars, but he's really more of a coach, I wouldn't hate on that so much, but your 14th spot has to be someone legit. Um, it is also really funny, by the way, that Andre Iguodala thinks he might he could come back next year. Um, if you're not going to come back and play for the Warriors, good luck out there. I don't know who the hell is going to be interested in that broken down body of yours. You are Izal, 100. You have you're you're done. You're old. You. Oh my neck, my back, my neck and my back. Oh. So let me ask you this: Would you do Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga for Pascal Siakam? The salaries would work in that situation. Uh, so I, um, I think, I, and I love Pascal Siakam. Um, I like the idea of moving him to the Warriors and I like the Raptors as a trade partner. I think that that, it, you know, is definitely doable. Um, I think that Siakam could perhaps maybe shift Draymond Green into center. Um, I think he could really help um, potentially in a sixth man role. I mean, I'd be curious to see how the Warriors would use Pascal Siakam, but he's an all-star. He's a forward. He adds size. Um, so I like him. I would, I just, I'm on the fence because here's the thing. It's so difficult when you look at moving both Jordan Poole and Jonathan Kaminga, because does Jonathan Kaminga have the potential to be a similar style player? Does Jonathan Kaminga have a higher ceiling? And that's where I think, it's a little bit tougher to talk about moving both of them. Um, and for me, that's, you know, kind of that's, that's the struggle is, is if we trade JK, are we trading him for someone who's going to be better in the long enough term or, you know what I mean? Who's going to be a better fit for the warriors and make it worth it enough that, you know, someday if Jonathan Kaminga eclipses that player, um, you know, will it be worth it? The Warriors made this trade. Um, yeah. So I guess that's my question. However, also with the Raptors, I know this is someone that we both touched on, but I also like OG Ananobi, which I know people have brought up in the chat. Um, here's I, I Here, Well, here's the problem with him. I've seen that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was reportedly a trade partner last year with the Warriors. Yeah. Uh, well, he, they were discussed. They were having discussions, correct? And the Warriors correct, just didn't but, want to match the asking price, whatever it was. I, I don't remember exactly, but there was definitely some movement or at least some discussions there. Report was they wanted three first round picks included in card. Here's the other problem with OG Ananobi is he makes uh, 18. He's going to be making next year eighteen point six million dollars. So you can't just do a Kaminga for Ananobi trade. That doesn't work. Kaminga next year is going to make six million dollars. So mm -hmm. you'd have to throw. You'd have to be either very creative. It probably would yeah. have to be Gary Payne the second and Kaminga uh, so that salaries could work. Um, you could do pool for Ananobi, but then you, you, the, the Raptors would have to give up a second piece on top of that. I don't mm -hmm. know if they would, uh, they're a shrewd business partner when it comes to making trades. Um, so that's what, that's, re that's the reality of Ananobi. If you want Ananobi, uh, the Raptors would have to throw in more, uh, if it's going to be for Jordan pool. And I don't know if they'd be willing to do that. Um, maybe the Warriors throw in some future first. I don't know. I don't know, but that that's on the table. Uh, any, any last thoughts before we move on from Toronto? No, like I said, I, I just, I like, I like Pascal Siakam. Um, and I still, yeah. I'm not opposed to OG Ananobi, but like you said, it just would kind of depend on how, how all that would shake out in terms of figuring out the right match. And, you know, that's what Bob Myers, at least for now gets paid the big bucks for. But like, if there was a way that they worked it out, um, I wouldn't be opposed to that. 
Um, I mean, OG Ananobi was what second team all defensive for for the NBA this season. I mean, was the Warriors well? struggled on defense. You can't hate, you know, bringing in a, a forward who can play some D. Uh, what is he six eight maybe? I mean, the Warriors can use size. He scored a decent bit. Um, you know, I, I I like both Ananobi and Siakam. It just kind of depends on, you know, what the Warriors would have to give up and if there would be any way to make it possible. But I think I would be shocked if the Warriors are looking to make moves if they weren't at least having discussions with Toronto specifically. Well, 30 minutes is just not enough for a show dedicated to trade proposals. So stay tuned for part two of Locked 